It's hard to overstate just how many problems the Alabama Supreme Court has caused for Republicans with its IVF ruling in February, because Republicans are now in a no-win situation where basically everyone is mad at them, including their core constituents of forced birthers. Yeah. So if you recall, the National Republican Senatorial Committee almost immediately urged GOP candidates to come out in favor of IVF, so that way they don't turn off any more moderates than they already have with their opposition to abortion, and soon after. After Donald Trump, as well as a number of Republicans, also vocalized support for the procedure. Now, in the House, more than 100 Republicans already co-sponsored the Life at Conception Act, which would effectively ban IVF nationwide, which put people like Nancy Mace, who co-sponsored that legislation, in a really awkward position after she vowed to defend IVF in the aftermath of Alabama's ruling because, well, the legislation that she supports would do the opposite. Now, she tried to pretend like the Life at Conception Act wouldn't do what it says it does, but nobody believed her because it's just demonstrably false. And it's why Republicans like Michelle Steele, who also vocalized support for IVF but supported the Life at Conception Act, withdrew her support for the bill because of what it does. So it's an absolute mess. But in the Senate, when Democrats actually gave Republicans the opportunity to prove that they support IVF, well, that legislation was blocked by the senator from Mississippi who claimed she was worried the bill to protect IVF would lead to scientists creating human chimera era hybrids. Yeah, so nationally, the Republican Party has not reassured voters that they're going to protect IVF like they're saying they will, which puts them at odds with even more moderates who are still pissed off about Roe v. Wade being overturned. But at the state level, Republicans in Alabama actually did a good thing, which is a sentence that I never thought I would hear myself say, but they did. They passed a bill that would protect the procedure and essentially shield doctors and hospitals from legal culpability. So this is important because it has allowed the procedure to resume in Alabama. And Republican Governor Kay Ivey signed it into law after it passed, saying this about the procedure. They are, um, we're getting a, <coughs> excuse me, a slight increase in the number of... Sorry, that is not the video that I intended to show you. Uh, this is the Kay Ivey quote that we're looking for. State lawmakers are approving a bill late Wednesday that gives civil and criminal immunity to IVF clinics and patients. Governor Kay Ivey quickly signing it into law, saying Alabama supports growing families through IVF. <coughs> now, because Alabama's burp queen signed this bill into law, things are essentially back to the way they were before Alabama's ruling. People who are seeking IVF can now get it again. Hospitals have resumed offering this treatment. And other states like Mississippi, Kentucky, and Missouri have also introduced similar bills. And Mississippi's GOP has actually endorsed it. So we're actually seeing movement in red states to make sure that IVF isn't blocked, which is pretty encouraging. Like, I never thought that I would see Republicans try to do a good thing, but they're actually doing it. And they're not doing it because they're good people. They're doing it because their asses are on the line and they've pissed off too many people at this point. So Republicans at the state level, they've handled this issue a lot better than Republicans at the national level. But unfortunately for them, you know, no good deed goes unpunished because it's only further isolated them from their own base because anti-abortion groups are now fucking pissed at Republicans like Kay Ivey because she decided to protect IVF. And even though Republicans at the federal level haven't taken meaningful action to protect IVF, the mere fact that they vocalize support for the procedure is unacceptable to forced birthers. Now, Politico reports, quote, the anti-abortion movement is turning on Republican lawmakers who support bills to protect vitro fertilization, accusing them of sanctioning murder. Oh, how the tables have turned. Several have attacked state and federal lawmakers who introduced legislation to protect IVF after the Alabama Supreme Court ruled last month that frozen embryos are children for giving doctors a license to kill and said legislators efforts would result in thousands of dead human beings god they're unhinged other groups are going further running ads against long-standing gop allies that use the same graphic imagery blood babies and scalpels they have long deployed to oppose democrats and the abortion rights movement quote for a lot of conservative republican lawmakers being against abortion has served as a kind of lazy way to say that you're a conservative said jameson taylor director of policy and legislative affairs for the Mississippi-based American Family Association action. Frankly, a lot
lot of Republican lawmakers are not in touch with conservative principles because they have not taken sufficient time to think through what those principles are. Now, I want to pause for a moment because what Taylor is saying here is incredibly consequential. He's saying it is no longer enough for Republicans to just be anti-abortion. In fact, supporting abortion bans, that's pretty easy. But the real litmus test now is going to be whether or not they are against IVF as well. Yes, I'll say it again. Forced birthers are saying being anti-IVF is part of our litmus test. Now, that right there, that position has created a conundrum for Republicans because their own base is saying you have to be against what the overwhelming majority of the country is in favor of. So they either have to support this small but vocal fringe within their own party or support the rest of the country. Now, we all know their opposition to abortion has already proven to be disastrous for them. But having said that, though, if they lose support from forced birthers, which is their own constituents, things could get even worse for them, politically speaking. Now, forced birthers are not going to go quietly into the night if Republicans don't represent them because they are very mobilized. For example, let's look at the response to Kay Ivey after she signed the IVF bill into law. Politico continues, in Alabama, the anti-abortion movement resoundingly condemned a bill shielding IVF providers from criminal and civil charges and pressured GOP Governor Kay Ivey to veto it. When she signed it anyway, one anti-abortion organization said the new law disrespects human life and strips human beings of their dignity Dignity, and another ran digital ads against Ivy and Republican lawmakers using graphic imagery and accusing them of betraying life. Jesus Christ. Quote, Politicians cannot call themselves pro-life, affirm the truth that human life begins at the moment of fertilization, and then enact laws that allow the callous killing of these pre-born children simply because they were created through IVF live-action president, Lila Rose said after Alabama Republicans approved the legislation. But Kay Ivey is not alone because in Mississippi, the anti-abortion movement and its GOP allies have called a Republican-backed proposal to protect IVF the greatest assault on the cause of life that we've seen in Mississippi in a long time and warned that the bad Democrat-based bill would lead to backdoor abortion and possibly cloning and selling of genetic materials of humans. Now, when it comes to Missouri, quote, I've had some negative comments from extreme pro-life type folks, said Missouri State Representative Bill Allen, a Republican who has introduced pro-IVF legislation. Quote, but I'm pro-life. This is bringing life into the world. I think there's something to be said about that. So Republicans are getting ripped to shreds for supporting IVF, and they're trying to reframe their support for IVF as a pro-life position. But forced birthers just aren't having it. They're saying, no, the fuck it's not. This is a pro-death position, and you're murderers now, too. It's just hilarious. Now, the article goes on to explain that it hasn't gotten to the point where these groups are withdrawing support from Republicans altogether or trying to primary them if they support IVF, but they're trying to educate these politicians, i.e. lobby them to support their position. But I mean, if you're already running ads against these Republicans, things have gotten pretty bad. But I mean, if these GOP lawmakers remain defiant, who knows what's going to happen next? Maybe we do start seeing primary challenges for real pro-life Republicans against the ones that support IVF. Things could get really ugly. Either way, this issue has created the biggest headache imaginable for Republicans. And I think that now they're not going to say this, but privately, they're probably thinking, holy shit, courting these forced brothers and evangelicals for decades was the biggest mistake we've ever made. Because believe it or not, this wasn't always the case. Like forced brothers weren't always a constituency of the GOP. But you can thank uh, Ronald Reagan for basically making this unholy alliance, for lack of a better word, with evangelicals and particularly the forced brothers. But um, now these Republicans are at odds with the rest of the country after Roe v. Wade was overturned because they're forced to defend a position that they've supported for decades that is incredibly unpopular. See, it was inconsequential when abortion was legal and Republicans were against it because they didn't think they'd ever be in this position, but now they are. And the chickens have come home to roost. But to be fair to forced birthers, I do think that being anti-IVF is actually the morally consistent position. Because if you genuinely believe that there is no difference at all between the death of an embryo and a fully developed human being, then it logically follows that manslaughter charges should be come after, you know, one of these lives or preborn children, as they call it, are destroyed, regardless if it's through abortion or miscarriage 
or because of IVF. You know, if that doesn't result in a pregnancy, I guess that's manslaughter, right? Now, I don't agree with that position. That logic, I think, is insane to me, but it's at least morally consistent, which makes Republicans' opposition to abortion all the more untenable because it doesn't make sense to think that terminating a pregnancy at week nine, for example, is murder, but yet disposing of frozen embryos isn't murder if you really do believe that life begins at conception and an embryo is a pre-born child, right? So Republicans are stuck between a rock and a hard place, but this gives them the opportunity right now, I'd argue, to just abandon this entire toxic fucking movement altogether, assuming things do continue to escalate. Because if forced birthers end up withdrawing political support for Republicans and this part of their constituency is no longer appeased by them, I mean, you might as well drop opposition to abortion altogether, so that way you're not perpetually at odds with the rest of the fucking country. That just makes sense to me politically. But it's not just about politics. This is a moral issue, and the people opposed to abortion aren't as pro-life as they'd like you to believe. And I say this because abortion bans are causing so much pain for people right now. Take Arizona Senator Eva Birch, for example, who recently became pregnant but discovered her pregnancy was non-viable. And rather than suffering another miscarriage, she has decided to terminate her pregnancy, but because of Arizona's laws, doing so isn't that easy. So I'm going to leave you with her testimony because I think it really underscores why safe and legal abortions are so important and why Americans are pissed off at Republicans for doing away with this. I don't know how many of you have been unfortunate enough to experience a miscarriage before, but I am not interested in going through it unnecessarily. And right now, the safest and most appropriate treatment for me and the treatment that I choose is abortion. But the laws that this legislature has passed has interfered with my ability to do that, along with countless others. And I, I want to explain what I mean and why I'm still pregnant as I address all of you today, despite having known about the unavoidable demise of my pregnancy and despite having been to the abortion clinic on Friday where they were equipped and prepared to perform my abortion. First, I was required to have another ultrasound at the abortion clinic, as all patients seeking abortion are required to do in Arizona an ultrasound that I absolutely did not need to have. I, I didn't have an ultrasound because my doctor thought I needed one. I had one because legislation has forced me to do that. An invasive transvaginal ultrasound that I didn't want or need to have performed by someone who didn't want to have to do it. I am safe and loved and protected in my marriage, but I cannot imagine how inappropriate that would be for a victim of sexual assault or for someone who has an abusive or coercive relationship with their partner, another unwanted vaginal penetration, but this time by the state, by the people who are commissioned to protect us. Then I got to sit through an exhaustive list of absolute disinformation that was read off to me. I was told that there were alternatives to abortion, parenting or adoption among them, as if delivering a healthy baby is an option for me. It is not. My medical provider was forced to tell me multiple things that don't apply to my situation and some that are just transparently, factually false. And they do this because of laws passed by this legislature in opposition to medical expert testimony and advice. After the mandatory ultrasound and the mandatory disinformation, I, I'm then gonna have to wait at least another 24 hours after my appointment before I can have a procedure. The last time that I had an abortion, I started to miscarry the night before it was scheduled to take place, and I was denied a procedure in the hospital because I was deemed not critical enough. In spite of the fact that my embryo had died and that my miscarriage had stalled, which left me with retained products of conception, the clauses for emergencies aren't good enough. These laws can serve to intimidate doctors, and it muddies the waters when they're trying to make complex decisions in situations that are really volatile. I had been bleeding and passing huge clots for hours, but I wasn't bleeding out. And I was still pregnant. So I was offered medication to make me start bleeding again and told that I could have a procedure when I had bled enough. The next day, I went to the abortion clinic where I was able to get the care that I needed. And two weeks later, abortions shut, cl clinics shut down in the wake of Roe. And I wouldn't have been able to get my procedure. I'm choosing abortion because I'm pregnant and for reasons that I should not have to explain to you or to the church or to the state of Arizona, I need to not be pregnant anymore. That's the best outcome for me. Arizonans deserve the freedom and the liberty to make those decisions for themselves. I will never try to force someone to have an abortion. And nobody should ever try to prevent me from having mine. Ha! <laughs>
Kiss me. Vagina. Ha, 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 ha.